Carolina Varsity. Uh, this video, we're going to take a look at what I believe are the top five coaching staffs within the Charlotte Conference's best of last. Uh, just as a reminder, this includes the three uh, conferences uh, within Charlotte, the Southwestern 4A, the IMEC, and the South Mech 7 um, conferences. So we're looking at coaches and staffs from those uh, three conferences only uh, in this video. Um, this was very hard. Um, a lot of these guys um, I uh, was coaching football against back when I was coaching for the past 13 years up until about 2014, 2015, uh, when I started uh, doing this stuff um, full time instead of coaching. So I got a lot of respect uh, for everyone that coaches here, especially in Charlotte and uh, surrounding areas. And, um, you know, trying to rank them is very tough. Uh, the big things that I looked at were, uh, of course, results on the field, uh, longevity, um, experience uh, in general, and um, just a, a general feeling of how I felt when I um, – tried to coach against these guys and how um, tough it was um, to try to game plan and, and do things against them and success um, once again that they've had uh, throughout the years. Um, so for number five, I, I, I couldn't decide between these two um, staffs, so it was a tie. Um, Wes Meck, um, I, I, like for, I like them for where they're going. Um, you know, Coach Davis hadn't been a uh, head coach for that long, but uh, he did a great job as a defensive coordinator before taking over as the uh, head coaching uh, position at West Mech. And, of course, last year he did a great job. Um, even before he got that job, I, I had several people tell me this man is going to um, turn around and, and take us to uh, big places. Um, his offensive coordinator, uh, Nick Mata, um, I <laughs> I love what he does. I know he's a disciple of Maurice Flowers, and um, you know his offense. I think is a little more vertical um, because he's got the personnel to push the ball down the field. Um, you know they they brought in a, a um, defense coordinator and Coach Bird, who was formerly a Harding. I know he's a former West Mech player. Um, I, I think they've got some some more coaches that they brought in that I think are going to help that defense um, and kind of you know push them to that next level. Um, getting them deeper into the playoffs. They made the second round last year, had nine wins, uh, one of the better years in West Mex history. And, um, you know, I expect them to continue on that track and even go deeper uh, as time goes on. So they were tied with um, East Mech. And, um, you know, everyone's got a ton of respect for uh, Barry Shuford. Uh, when you can go to so many programs like he has throughout the years and continuously turn them around, um, not people can, not many people can say they went into Garinger, turned it around, and had a winning season. But Barry Schufer did that uh, back in the '90s, along with the other places he's been, such as Parkwood, Bessemer City. Uh, some of his best work was at Olympic, where they had some really good teams, and uh, now he's at East Mac, of course. Um, along with him is uh, Coach Darren Hart, who was formerly the uh, head coach at West Charlotte um, last season. Um, had some, some things that go on there, but that doesn't take away from his ability um, as a defensive coach. Um, had success on the college level uh, as a defense coordinator as well. So he's very smart, um, very um, very good at teaching techniques, especially on the, uh, the linebacker and uh, DB levels. That's a big asset for East Mech. Um, coach Schufer has even written a book about um, coaching and how you should um, – kind of formulate your staffs and, and so forth and so on. Uh, if you can write a book about coaching, you're, <laughs> you're in the top five of, of my list uh, for sure. So definitely a lot of respect uh, for the East Met coaches as well. Uh, number four on, on this list is Butler. And, um, you know, you can't deny the success Coach Brian Hales has had uh, learning from, you know, some of the best uh, in Barry Schufer, actually, who started out at Butler, and then Mike Newsom, of course, who um, is at A.L. Brown, so they're not eligible, but, of course, Mike Newsom's a great coach in his own right. And um, Brian Hales has just continued on that uh, winning tradition. He's got a state title and several teams that um, 
have won double digit um, games in years and gone deep into the playoffs. Um, his offensive play calling is, is some of the best, um, especially with the things he does in formation, uh, shifting and motion, and a um, way to get matchups and um, hit big plays down the field um, is really impressive. Um, defensive side, of course, Michael Nahum, um, very good defensive coordinator, um, knows how to get his guys in the right spots and puts them in uh, places that just go play and be successful. That's one of the best things I like about his defenses that I've observed um, throughout the years. Um, they picked up Brandon Sneed, who's a, um, a great offensive line coach. He's former offense coordinator at East Mech with Mary Shuford. Um, I think that's a, a great get, a great asset to have. Um, you know, they've got a lot of coaches there that um, came through the program and are giving back. And anytime you see that, that that's a, uh, a great sign. And, um, you know, those guys do an excellent job down there at Matthews. Uh, really good group. Uh, number three, I have Vance. And, um, you know, I, I respect the heck out of uh, Coach Aaron Brand. Uh, I know last year I called him one of the best offensive play callers around. I still believe that, of course. Um, they had a great year last year, made a um, run to the state semifinals. And, um, you know, you, when you can come in there and take kids, you know, that have talent but didn't always have the, the greatest direction and put them on a, a place where they can um, always be successful in whatever they're doing and, and get them to execute um, consistently and keep them focused in, on the field and, you know, off the field, uh, that's the sign of a great head coach. And I've seen all the time he's won awards, not only for coaching, but being a teacher, being an influence in the school. And, um, you know, you can't ask for anything more than that from a head coach. Um, on top of that, you got um, Coach Miles Aldridge, who was uh, formerly the head coach at uh, Huff and has been a head coach for so many years, has been on the college level as a coordinator. Um, he's been in the NFL in his past. Um, I mean, you got so many years of experience there. And he's there as a defensive coordinator. So you really got, you know, two head coaches on that staff. And um, if you got Coach Aldridge just focusing on defense and not having to worry about offense, I mean, you really got an asset there. Um, with those two um, working together, uh, it, it's going to be a, a heck of a a great time advance from a coaching perspective because you've got uh, two of the best on both sides of the ball doing what they do best. And um, when you got that, you got, you know, something cooking in the right direction. You put that with a lot of talent, um, it's going to be a good year for Vance. And, um, you know, those guys work extremely hard up there. Um, and that that's just a really – Really experienced staff that's had a lot of success, and you know you've got to you know give them their accolades for that for sure. Uh, number two on this list is Myers Park, and um, you know they're led by head coach Scott Chadwick. It's a really good offensive mind, um, and he's got a heck of a staff behind him. Uh, coach Chadwick has won you know everywhere he's been, and um, you know you got someone that can lead. Uh, three former head coaches on the staff, you know, that's a lot of respect right there because, you know, <laughs> former head coaches, sometimes you get different ideas and sometimes can, ego can get in the way, but, you know, you have a great head coach that can manage that, and that is definitely what Scott Chadwick is. Um, and you mentioned the three former head coaches. You got uh, Joe Evans, who was formerly at Arby Kell on the Myers Park staff. You got Mark Harmon, who was a former head coach at uh, West Mech on that staff. And um, just found out that um, Coach Hal Brown, who was formerly at Independence as the uh, interim head coach uh, last year, is on that staff as well. So you've got a lot of uh, great coaching talent uh, on that staff with a lot of great knowledge um, to lead a very talented uh, bunch of kids at Myers Park. And uh, these guys last year, uh, 11 wins, um, you know, tied for the, um, I think, total amount of wins in the school history in a season, made the second round, uh, lost to Vance in a very close game uh, there. Uh, their expectations are going to be really high, and they're going to be led by a, a really, really good group of coaches and good guys as well. Uh, I really enjoy talking with everyone of those guys that I mentioned. Um, ton of respect 
with those guys. They've had success in their other stops, and um, I think that success is definitely going to continue uh, this season at Myers Park. So at number one, I've got Mallard Creek, and I, and I tell you, you know, when I started sitting down and trying to decide who was where, um, you look at the full picture, and Mallard Creek's got the full picture, and it starts at the top with Mike Palmieri. Um, been here over 10 years. I know he came from Florida uh, to take over the Mallard Creek program. Um, I remember coaching against him his first year, and um, even though they didn't, you know, obviously first year program didn't have uh, the studs and everything they got now, uh, but even then they were tough. They played hard. They fought, you know, every whistle to the end of the game. And I remember seeing them back then, and I said, you know, we got them again next year, and they're going to be a load. <laughs> And then next year, they came back and they started paying people back, man. I mean, they they were, you know, totally different. And, um, you know, everyone says that they get, you know, insane amount of talent. But you have to go back to the beginning. And in the beginning, it wasn't like that. And, you know, someone had to get it started to, um, you know, make them a school that other people would look at when, you know, they relocate and such. And um, Mike Palmieri did that. Um, they, they really busted in the weight room. They busted their practice. I've seen them um, multiple times in those um, places over the summers when we would go do seven on seven against them. You know, they're, they're always working, always working. And um, he's got a great staff of uh, coaches behind him that, that push these guys to work. And um, I mentioned this guy, uh, Coach Little John, before. Um, he, he's incredible in the things that he does in um, training uh, these guys, especially starting from a young, young level. You look at their JV teams, and you see how good the JV teams are, and that, that talent just doesn't happen when it goes to varsity. It's developed, and he is a big part of that in the weight room and in the track. You look at the defense coordinator, Trip Stone, um, going to be a head coach himself uh, one day here, probably the next couple years. He's that good. I'm surprised that he's still there. It must be his own choice because I know a lot of people are um, interested in getting a guy that can uh, lead a defense uh, the way he can. And um, they picked up some additional coaching on the offensive side of the ball um, that I think is going to uh, push their offense um, to another level um, that they haven't seen before, especially in the passing game. I expect them to open some things up this year. Uh, but you know, I'm talking about track records, man. Look at, I mean, it's, it speaks for themselves with the state championships they won. Um, a down year for them last year being 9-3. and three. I mean, some schools around here would celebrate 9-3 and three like it was Christmas. <laughs> and for these guys, it's a down year. So that's a reflection of how good the program is, how strong it is, and how well um, run it's it, it's led. And that's through their head coach and those assistant coaches that I mentioned. So we are really blessed here in Charlotte to have some great, great coaches. Um, you know, they did an article in the Greensboro paper I thought was really well done about the um, coaches that are looking to go to South Carolina for obvious reasons. And, um, you know, I, I definitely get it. Um, the money's better. You know, it's more of a value for football in South Carolina than it is in North Carolina. Hopefully that'll change. Uh, but, you know, Hopefully we can keep these guys together for a while and um, and continue to enjoy some of the great coaching and some of the great football we get uh, from these guys. Of course, there you can't name everybody, but um, there are so many other coaches that do a great job um, here in Charlotte and across the state, for that matter. And you know, from another, from one coach to another, I just want to say thank you for the time and efforts that you put in. Uh, that's a big reason why I do this because. You know, you don't get enough recognition. You don't get enough appreciation. Uh, you got people slamming you on the forums, on Twitter, Facebook, about your decisions that you make sometimes on a daily basis. Parents coming down on you. Um, it's a thankless job. But I just want to say from me and all of us at Carolina Varsity, thank you for what you do. Um, you know, having a, uh, to be a role model for these kids, um, it's tough. But um, we definitely appreciate you, um, and we hope to continue to uh, enjoy the work you do on Friday nights uh, for many more years here in the Charlotte area. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We definitely appreciate it. And uh, we've got a lot more coverage uh, coming 
in the coming weeks, days, months, and years <laughs> uh, from us at CarolinaVarsity.com. Once again, thank you.